What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about home, e home economics, the extreme money management course. And we're going to talk about some of the foundational things that I was working on. Because today I was working on a section. And if you didn't know, it is my goal to be finished with this course before the end of the month. So one of the things that I was getting into, because like I was uh, creating coursework, and also if you're in the corporate toolbox or the corporate papers, the email that went out to grant you access to the home economics course went out this morning. Also, a discount email went out to Hustler Kung Fu people, and you know, that's a limited time offer. And I wanna talk about why I developed this course. The last five months, I've been doing a lot of research on the economy, demo people, cultural poverty, generational poverty, and I've come up with some wisdom, some insights, and some um, solutions. And one of the things that happens with you is when you grow up, no one sits you down and tells you what to do with your money. You go to work, you get a job, you start spending. You're living at home, one of the first things you do is you go out and get yourself some nice clothes, you get yourself some nice gear, and you immediately start spending. And it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. I mean, you could be 70 years old. And one of the things that I realized in putting together this course was businesses help me because here's the thing, when you become a business owner, you exponentially expand. You expand your relationships, you expand your perspective, you expand your knowledge. And one business, and I gotta say, that was really foundational in helping me create this course was the storage auction business. I learned so much from the storage auction business, it literally blew my mind. It literally, it's got me like, wow. This was really, really deep. I was working on a section of the course and it is something that unless you actually went through it, this is, let's talk about esoteric knowledge. Esoteric knowledge is knowledge that you get when you participate in an endeavor that more, more like they're truck drivers, like truck drivers. There's something you can sit down with another truck driver and y'all can have a discussion about things I simply don't know because I don't drive a truck. But one of the things that came off for me, and I will talk about some key points that came from me being in the storage auction business that helped me learn how to manage money. One of the things that I found bewildering, well, bewildering, is the number of people who were rent storage units for years, which is just a waste of money. And I learned so much in the storage auction business that it is literally like, it's blowing my mind because you would think, now once again, I did not do the storage auction business like the extra person would do the storage auction business. I was corporately trained to create a sales process. So I took my corporate training and applied it to the storage auction business. This, there's this guy, um, I think his name is Jay Williams, Jay something. He uses a lot of extremely large words and um, he, 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 he says, he, his name is Jay, that's his first name. He's a shorter man, glasses, slick back hair, very, very smart guy. And one of the things that I did that he talks about is I took knowledge from one industry and applied it to another industry. And that can be extremely powerful because I went out there in the storage auction business and I knew that I had to create a marketing campaign. I knew that I had to advertise. I, I knew this going in 
And I feel that this is one of the reasons I was so successful in the storage auction business is because I had insights, wisdom, and a knowledge base of things I knew that I had to do. And one of the things that hit me is was I was one of the first people in the storage auction business to use Craigslist. And it, it's kind of funny. You know, that's how I got my first Gmail account was Craigslist. It was an engineer in Midtown who was giving away free because at the point when Google introduced Gmail, you just couldn't sign up. You had to get an invite. And he was an engineer and he sent me an invite and that's how I got my first Gmail account from Craigslist. And one of the things that I'm talking about, because like I, I look at and I've analyzed and I've look, looked at a lot of data. Number one, average income in this country is $35,000 a year. And these are not stupid or dumb people. These are people who don't know what they don't know. Because here's the slippery slope with the income thing. The older you get, the more dramatically your income is going to shift down. Uh, the older you get and you get, you know, like, like with and it's a gig economy, people are not getting seniority, people are not moving up in management. So one of the things I feel that the gig economy does, it predisposes people to mediocrity because you don't have to interview, you don't have to dress up, you can roll out the head bed looking like any old way. And like, I don't, I know I don't look like it, but this is calculated look. There's a reason that I wear this hat. There's a reason that I wear this, these, these uh, 25th Infantry uh, Division shirts. If you notice, I've started wearing them virtually every video. I've ordered a whole bunch of them because that's my YouTube uniform. And once, you know, because a lot of people I wear, you know, sometimes I wear it out, but mostly I only wear them for the YouTube videos. And what happened with the gig economy guys is that they don't have a uniform and they don't have a protocol. And one of the things that will mess you up is luxuries once tasted become habits. So if you get used to not having to dress up, not having to shave, not having to prepare yourself to go to work and you just go to work looking like who done it, that's going to become a habit. It's going to become a habit. And it's not gonna, it's not a good habit. Because one of the things that I do every morning when I get up, I get out of bed, you know the first thing I do? I make my bed. Then I go in the bathroom, wash my face, brush my teeth, shave if I need it. Then I come out here and I keep my place neat and I have uh, my setup set up where I can actually like, you know, since I live alone, I got camera equipment literally set up everywhere because, you know, I have people coming over and it's like, what's up with the camera? And it's like, I do YouTube. And oh, OK, OK, because essentially this whole thing is set up for me to achieve my YouTube goals. Um, once again, I have the capacity to do that because I have the freedom to do that because I don't have to go to a job. I don't have to. Like this morning was really enjoyable. I, this morning I got up, I um, did a few things and I got into course creation. I sent out my emails. It, the day was pretty much an internet day where I planned out to do certain things and to get ready for the um, webinar Sunday. And you wanna be at the webinar Sunday because this is called home economics. Now why did I call it home economics? One of the things that I've done, and every time I do something, I learn something. And I learned when creating the corporate papers, the corporate toolbox, that this was high level tactics that people who didn't already have the basics, they were trying to do, you know, cause you know, I would, I would talk to people and I would have some questions and stuff. And a lot of people were struggling because I neglected to create the foundational situation because this is what home economics is, is the foundational course before the business building course. Now I know I have a video on the corporate game talking about the dangers of starting a business on credit. And this kind of goes into this because here's the thing. 
And this, once again, storage auction business. I learned that so many business owners went out of business, not because they had a bad business. No, not because the business didn't make any money. No, it's because they had bad money management habits and behaviors. I saw this over and over and over again. I like, there was this guy at the seafood restaurant. He left his files. I could see how much money he was making per month, but he had a Mercedes. His wife had a Mercedes. His girlfriend had a Mercedes. And they were all leased. So he had a very, very high burn rate relative to his earning rate. And he just literally put himself into insolvency and he had to file bankruptcy because the business was making money but because he couldn't keep his paws off the money, the, the business went out of business. And I, I saw this over and over and over again. And this is one of, like, once again, the storage structure business has taught me so many things. And one of the things that I have learned and I have appreciated and that I have a firmer understanding is your money management style and behavior will define you. And this is one of the things that I address in home economics because everyone thinks that if they made more money, their life would be better. That is a fallacy. See, you, and I'm about to kind of make a little detour here. You gotta be happy with you. And I was having a conversation with some people the other day. And I mean, this may sound cliche, it may sound a little simpish. I love YouTube. I absolutely love YouTube. I love the opportunity. I love the exposure. And this is why I've been doing YouTube for 13 years. This is actually the longest career I've ever had, YouTube. And notice I said career. I don't treat YouTube as a hobby or something to do. And once again, you're going to see a dramatic shift in the content in the next six months because I felt that I understood YouTube. I am just scratching the surface of YouTube because I had an epiphany and you're ever, you're ever in bed and you think you're awake, but you're really dreaming. It, I had one of those kind of moments and it was like me talking to me and it's like, dude, you think you're making money now, wait till you really get your act together. And I was sitting there like, okay, I don't know if that was an angel, I don't know what it was, but once again, the concept that I have learned from the storage auction business, because here's the thing, first it started with the lessons I learned at Rent-A-Crate, then the lessons I learned at Panel Systems Unlimited, then the lessons I learned at Business Environments, then the lessons I learned from my, my first business. What happened is each year my knowledge stacks. I have so many data points in my head that literally I can see some stuff and like once again. Okay. Each year I learn more and my data points and my knowledge base gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And I have this ball of knowledge. And then I am one of the few people who is creating a YouTube network. This is where a lot of people do YouTube. They'll build one channel. They'll put all their energy into this one channel, right? I have built the Institute of Economic Thought. Uh, what I am doing with um, the House of Pain is offloading older videos on this channel over there so that you can get a chance to watch the videos without losing your mind. I have Disruptive Mail where I'm actually having a lot of fun. Then I have the corporate game. And the beginning of next month, I'm bringing back Savage Finance. So this is gonna be a five channel network that will have similar things, but actually different niches. And once I actually sat down and I thought about it, cause like sometimes you need to take a break. And I took a five month break where I wasn't really focused. You know, I was just making content. And that was the only thing I was making content. And I was thinking, and I was thinking, and I was thinking, and I was thinking. And one of the thoughts that came to me was, how do I help these people do better with their money? Because 
One of the frustrating things is when I put out a code, of course, and I, I know this, this has happened over and over again. The people who already have went through that part of starting your business, they started their business and they were making some money and they get in the course, they actually do better because they have gotten past that. What kind of business should I start? What should I do? And you know, and I just kind of fill in some gaps for them. But one of the things that I feel that it's going to be really, because I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you the plan. Because once again, I've been thinking, I've been thinking, I've been thinking. Home economics is going to be the foundational course for the new Savage Finance. That's why it's called Extreme Money Makeover, the Extreme Money Management Course. Because when I launch Fi Savage Finance, and I'm going to launch Savage Finance, the videos will be edited. Uh, I'm not doing the editing, I'm going to outsource that. And I, like I said, I already have a plan, I already have a concept for the new Savage Finance. And once I really get to booking with gas, uh, this, this whole network is going to be quite interesting, quite interesting. But as I have this ball of knowledge and insights and wisdom and methodologies that are 100% organic, that's why you can't Google the stuff that I'm going to teach you because you will enroll in home economics and you will see stuff and concepts that no one else has ever talked about because they have not lived my life. Home economics comes from my experiences, my personal thing. And once again, to be 100% candid, the storage auction business, I made a good income. Consistently for many years did about 20,000 a month. 20, you know, I had a few months where I did 30, had a few months where I did 15, but that's kind of where I stayed for a long, long time. I didn't start making this kind of money until I got the leverage of the internet. And one of the things that I, and beginning to understand is I need to teach you guys all of my dirty tricks. And what do I mean by dirty tricks? When you are just doing something like this is one of the things like uh, home economics is going to expand because like I said, I got until let's see in the next week is Thursday. So I got the Thursday to get that finished. And I'm going to put more stuff in there. I'm going to send out more emails and I set up the email list and I set up everything. And at some point I'm going to set up the URL. Right now I'm using the teachable URL because for some reason it takes two days to populate. Sometimes you can set it up and it works instantly. But once I get that, I'm, I, I have so much work to do. I have so much work to do. And one of the things I'm showing you is I am building this. It ain't perfect. See, th this is one of the things that I have to get through to you guys with home economics. Stop chasing perfect. Stop chasing the right time, the right vibe, the right feel. No, just get started and work it out on your way down. Because like, once again, uh, the five checking account blueprint. I've had so many people who got hung up on, should I open it at one bank or should I open it at five banks? Uh, in home economics, I'm gonna address that very simply, very clearly, and very directly. And that is a pivotal part of home economics because here's the thing, because I'm going to teach you how to set up your business finances before you get your business. Habits, behaviors, habits and behaviors. And once you adopt these good habits, because there's going to be stuff you're going to learn in home economics that there are many business owners who don't have their business finances set up that type. I have talked to a lot of business owners. I'm amazed at the number of business owners who only have one business checking account. I'm just like, especially if I'm like, I'm just literally blown away at the, like I have, I have like 10 business, 10 checking accounts at, well, at Chase. I have seven at Wells Fargo. I have, I've got literally about 35 business checking accounts across various businesses and it keeps everything organized because, you know, like I'm not really stressing over tax season because everything is organized throughout the year. And this is some of the stuff I'm going to teach you because that man, that, that, that once you operate from an organized perspective, 
your life just moves so simply because like one of the things, and this will not be in uh, home economics, but I'm just going to give you the concept of a home office. This whole thing is set up to facilitate me, my workflow for doing YouTube. It's set up like that. So I can just wake up and bam, I don't have to set this big light up. I don't have to set, because it's already set up so I can just sit down and go. Now I know that sounds simple, and that, but see, the, the big impact from a workflow perspective is I don't have to do a lot of stuff because like, I'm gonna tell you something. In here, I have multiple studios. I got, I let the blinds up and I film at night. I got the backdrop of the city. I've got the corporate lounge. I have this studio. I've got three studios. And perhaps if I wanted to do some stuff in the kitchen, I could have four studios. I got four studios and then I got an office with another studio. So we're going to talk about getting your life organized. So when you start your business, you will have the habit and the behavior of being organized. And this is huge. This is huge. What did I do every morning? And I've talked about it in many videos. I get up, I check all of my major bank accounts. Uh, a few ones I really don't check because there's not much money going in there. Then I check my personal bank account. Then I check my FICO. Every morning, seven days a week. Takes me about two minutes to do that. Why do I do that? So I know what's going on. It is part of my habit and behavior. And this is going to be a really, really big part of home economics because uh, a lot of people just want to quote, go quote to secure the bag, which I think is a stupid statement. Um, and I'm going to tell you why I think it's stupid. What is a bag? A bag is a container. And what do we know about containers? Containers have a certain size and there's a finite amount of stuff that can go in the container. So you talking about secure the bag. You're talking about limiting your aspect of, of making money. Securing the bag. I want to secure the bag. You are projecting a limited financial scope upon yourself. Words we use are very, very important or extremely important, extremely important. And you are programming yourself for mediocrity with this secure the bag nonsense and you don't even know it because you should be thinking about building a system that makes money perpetually that's way better than securing the bag that's a thousand times better than securing the bag but with home economics this is the course i should have created years ago but i didn't understand because see i'm just like you at times, I don't know what I don't know. And until I put these cor courses together and got people in them, and I was like, okay, ah, all right, so now we need to do this. And once again, if you're in the corporate papers, uh, the corporate toolbox, you got an email this morning. And if you're a Hustlers Kung Fu, and let's talk about Hustlers Kung Fu. Um, I got a lot of people who like the resale. I'm going to do a special webinar on resale because this can help you with your home economics. Um, but one of the things is, I am probably not going to support any more courses at Hustlers Kung Fu. Hustlers Kung Fu is like seven years old. And honestly, I have moved on. I am really good at resell, but I'm really good at reselling my stuff. And in the course, I answer why I'm so good at reselling my stuff. And you know, I don't have to go out and get stuff to resell. So I would feel from my acquisition of items to resell, I would assume that that's kind of not as strong as it used to be. That used to be one of my superpowers, but now it's like, eh, because I'm not going out to buy stuff to resell. I'm reselling stuff that I have bought from personal use and business, and it's way, way easier. So. There's not going to be a lot of directives on resale, but 
There will be. Now, this is what's going to happen. You go ahead, you enroll in home economics. And like I said, my goal is to get that done this month. And then next month, I am going to start the your first company. There's going to be four modules over at Glending, Glending's Cameron School. And why do I call it Glending's Cameron School? Let me tell you why. At some point, that's going to be at the top of my search results because that's I, there's a reason that I named the school after me because once it gets enough students and it gets enough traffic, it's going to populate and that's going to be on page one of my Google search results. It's very intentional. It's a very calculated move. And there's going to be four modules because I'm not going to do what I did because like I said, the, the ball of knowledge keeps getting bigger and I learn what to do and I learn not to do. One of the things is this has been pretty much a soft launch with home economics. I didn't do a big launch because as I go forward, you're going to see a better representation. You're going to see a better presentation. And then I'm going to get into your first company. But one of the things that I want you guys to do is develop sound, practical, good financial behaviors now. And this is what the home emphasis of, because like I said, Home economics is going to be the foundational course for the new Savage Finance. And I haven't even started on Savage Finance. I haven't even created the channel yet. I haven't even created the first video. So once again, there's a lot of planning. Because like I said, I took those five months off and I was thinking, 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 thinking. What can I build? How can I make it better? And also at some point, I'm probably going to write some more books. So there's a lot of work to be done. And then, But once again, I'm going to get this home economics because Home economics is so important because you will learn that it's not how much money you make, it's how you manage the money that you make. And this is something I learned many, many years ago in that boarding house. When I had a job and I had a part-time job and I saved my money for the part-time job. I wasn't balling out of control, I wasn't making any money, but because I, for the first time in my life, I actually managed my money extremely well and when I had a down and down point in my life when I got laid off, I had money in the bank to sustain and support me. And I didn't have like thousands. Well, I had like four thousand dollars. I didn't have like 10, 20. I didn't have a hundred thousand. And what I learned is that when you manage your life in this manner and you, you know, once again, that create that was a foundational foundational aspect of why I saved so much money because you will hear many youtubers savers or losers don't save money take your money out the bank invest 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 right and I have a completely different approach because I feel knowing what I know that 80% of Americans make less than $35,000 a year a robust bank account would be better off for the average American than an investment account. Why? Because, you know, we're going to talk about so many things because, like I said, I'm still building out the course. It's going to revamp. Sections are going to turn and twist around a little bit. I'm going to work on that a little bit more today. And one of the things that you have to understand and you have to appreciate is this is something you can teach your children. You can sit down with your children and teach them these lessons. So the people who come into home economics in the first group, because uh, like I haven't even found it, you know, I started to do a founders thing. I might bring that up. Um, they come into home economics and they get this knowledge, stuff that you cannot Google. You cannot Google this stuff. This is 100% proprietary. You get this knowledge and then you teach it to your children and your children grow up with sound, practical financial behaviors. That's a beautiful thing. That's an amazing thing. That's a great thing. So one of the things that we're going to do is teach you the principles of money. Because once again, I have to teach you how to manage money before I teach you how to make money. And that was something that came crystal clear to me as we went down the path, as we had classes, as we had communication, as I talked to you guys and I got the feedback and I was like, oh, that ain't working. So I need to pivot over here. And this is one of the reasons that I just took a break 
And I was like, okay, what can I put together that's gonna be foundational? And this is thing, this is gonna be evergreen. This is one of the reasons, this is one of the things about taking time to plan. Because once again, what I tell you, home economics is gonna be the foundational course for the new Savage Finance. So it's gonna be an evergreen course that I can sell from now until forever. So this is one of the reasons that I'm rolling out. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm not really screaming and shouting and yelling. Cause like I said, I haven't even really got into the marketing. This is pretty much a soft um, push. Cause like I'm still building the course. And then once I get that going and you know the emails and all this other stuff and the marketing and get it ramped back up, then we will start cooking the gas. But guys, this is gonna be a foundational educational course for you to learn how to manage your finances, to manage your money. And it's going to be glorious. Because once again, I gotta teach you how to manage money before I teach you how to make money. Because I like, I, there's this one YouTube video and I haven't had time to, do, to address it, but it's like the 20th richest people in America made their fortunes on this one stop. That video is 100% a lie. You know what? The 50th largest, the richest people in America all got their money from business, not stock. The 50th. Now, let's talk about Warren Buffett. So everyone brings up, Warren Buffett's an investor. How many investors do you know that can buy Geico? How many? How many? That's, you know, when you go out and buy an active, productive business, and I have Geico Insurance, I feel their customer service is top notch. When you can buy a complete company like that, you're a little bit more than just a, an investor. He bought a complete business. So, you know, everyone loves like Warren Buffett, like, all right, how many of you can be like Warren Buffett? How many of you have Warren Buffett's money? Please put that in the comments. Let me know how many of you got 130 billy just sitting around in cash. Just sitting around in cash. Let, let me know how many of you got that. How many of you got that? So, the, the you know, one of the things that you see is, and we're not, in home economics, we're going to prep you and get you ready to become an investor as we kind of move through this whole process but it's the preparatory course because my goal is to have you so financially tight that when you start making your business and your business starts making money, you can see what I like to call income appreciation. You will, you will be in what I call an income surplus environment. Now, what is that? An income surplus environment is when you get paid, money goes into your personal checking account, right? And the next time you get paid, paid, there's still money in there from the last paycheck. And what happens is your paycheck starts stacking up. At that point, you're ready to be an investor. Not a minute before. Not a minute before. And because one, once you get to that level, you're moving at advanced levels, you know, because like I, I've shown you guys the receipts. I've, I've done videos. And like I said, I am not showing uh, receipts anymore because it makes me a target. So you will not see any more bank account receipts or pay stubs or anything like that because I need to be more practical. I need to speak to you guys where you are because just to be frank, I mean, not to be an asshole, but the majority of you are never going to get where I'm at. I'm not going to whisper in your ear, pretend you're, you're just not. You're just not. But can you get to 250 a year? Yes, you can. And 250 is an area that I hung out for pretty much a decade. And you can have a fantastic, wonderful, good, productive, and rich life at 250,000 a year. And that's my goal to get you there because before you first make your first million, you gotta make your first thousand. And we have everyone who's like, hey, we're making millions, right? And I see these videos, this dude don't even look like he makes six figures. And I'm just like, step by step, we make a thousand, then we make 10,000, then we make a hundred thousand, then we make a hundred, two hundred thousand, we make three. 
step by step. You will not make your first million before you make your first hundred thousand. It ain't happening. So we're going to be talking about this. And like I said, um, this Sunday, 4 p.m., we've got a live webinar and we're probably going to have a few more home economic webinars before we get into the business building situation because I got to get home economics done. I got to get it tight. As I'm doing this video, I'm thinking of more stuff than I'm putting home economics and we're going to like, it's going to be glorious. It's going to be glorious. So what you can do is go ahead and get in home economics and probably what I am going to do because right now home economics doesn't have a payment plan. And why is that? Because the business class will have a payment plan, which will include home economics. So it's really important that I get this done. And once again, I, I, I promise you, you won't be let down or you will not find information that you can find anywhere else on Google. You're going to find some really proprietary different kind of stuff here that no one else talks about because no one else has had my experiences. You're going to get something special and decent here. So this is Glendon Cameron. You can go below. You can enroll in the course. It's going to be in the description. It's going to be in the first link and we will be cooking with gas.